Hi, everybody. Today's assignment is to do some problem solving in Canvas uh, using series circuits, simple series circuit, and uh, putting together all of the stuff that we've learned so far. So I thought I would step you through a typical kind of problem solving if you're given all of the resistors and the values of all the resistors and the voltage. So in this case, um, I'm going to start with being given um, a voltage of 150 volts. Uh, on first resistor value of 33 ohms, second resistor value of 22 ohms, and a third resistor value of 56 ohms. So if I look in my series circuit over here, that means that I have 150 volts coming out of my battery here, and then I have 33 ohms for R1, 22 ohms for R2, and 56 ohms for R3. So the first thing that we're going to do is look for what our total resistance is. Actually, first let's fill in the table for what we know already. We know that this is going to be 33 ohms, this is going to be 22 ohms, and this is 56 ohms, and then we know our total voltage is 150 volts. Okay. So now we're going to uh, look for our total resistance right here, this part right in here. Um, and in order to do that, we're, we um, have learned that, that the total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of all the individual resistors. For step one here, we're going to say total resistance. So the mathematical model we're going to use is RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many Rs you have. I've been doing mostly. Uh, circuits with just three resistors, but you could have two resistors, you could have 10 resistors. Uh, I just generally default to three. I don't know, maybe because there's one thing on each side of the square, um, but I'll try to throw in some problems that have different numbers of resistors. Everything is pretty much done the same. Um, so plugging in my numbers, I'm going to take 33 plus 22, which is 55, plus 56, that's going to be 111. So our total resistance is 111 ohms. So I can put that over here in my table. Now here's the thing with the table. If you notice across the top, we have um, V, I, and R. Um, so we know Ohm's law tells us that V equals IR. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, Ohm's law tells us that V equals IR. So if we have um, uh, two of these values, we should be able to find the third value because I times R right here, if we did I times R, the value in the first column times the value in the second column should equal the value in the third column, right? So if I look down here, I can see in my total column right here, right down here, I can see I have two values and that, that the fact that there's two values there means that I can use Ohm's law to find the third value. I'm going to put that over here. We're going to find the total current. So we're going to use V equals IR, um, and we're going to have 111 equals I times, um, oh, I did that backwards. I'm sorry, 150 equals I times 111. And so if we divide both sides by 111, we're going to get that our current is going to be equal to 1.351.351.351 well, 1 repeated. So I'm going to do, um, uh, in the, the Canvas quiz, it asks you to give your answers to, the, uh, uh, to two decimal places. So I want to make sure I'm, round, I'm keeping more than two decimal places here. So instead of just doing 1.35, I'm going to do 1.3514 amps and keep, my, keep two extra decimal places so that I um, have the level of accuracy um, that any rounding error isn't going to perpetuate and make me not do be close enough on the Canvas quiz. So I can fill that in over here, 1.3514 amps. And so one of the cool things about this is because one of the characteristics of a series circuit is that the current is the same everywhere. So once you get one 
current value, you actually have all of the current values. It's all going to be the same. And the reason for that is if you look up at the picture there, and look, you have one path for the current. And the current has to be the same everywhere in that whole, in, in the wire, because there's only one path for that for it. Um, if we wanted to have different currents, then we would have to split up into more than one path. So um, that means that we can go ahead and um, down here, we can just fill in 1.3514 for all of the currents. And again, this is a characteristic of series circuits. Um, in series, all currents are the same. Yay, which is nice because that's less work for us to do, okay? Let me see if I can erase this highlighter without erasing everything else. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, all right, so then we need to find the voltage drops. And again, if you notice here, if you look at each one of these, um, uh, each one of these rows now on our table, if you look at each one of the rows, we have two values in each one of the rows. So that means we can use Ohm's law to find the third value. So I'm gonna do this over to the side. I'm gonna calculate the voltage drops, uh, or find, because that's less letters. Find voltage drops. Sorry about my dog barking. I hopefully have quieted them down a little bit. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is, oops, that went too far. I just wanted to give myself a little more space. Is we're going to use Ohm's law to find the voltage drops across each one of the resistors. The reason why I call it a voltage drop, that's kind of the terminology we'll use. And that, that's how much the voltage changes from before and after the resistor. So it's how much voltage is lost by the current from each resistor. Um, so let's start with the first resistor, R1, uh, and we're going to use V equals IR. Um, and we know the current is 1.3514, and the first resistance is 33. And if we multiply those together, we're going to get 45.5962. I'm going to round this one now uh, up to, to two decimal places, uh, the way you would on your um, Canvas quiz. So that would be 45.60 volts. I can put that over here in my in my table. And then R2, we're gonna use the same V equals IR. So it's the same 1.3514 times 22 ohms. And that's gonna be 29.7308. So we're gonna round just to two decimal places, put that in the table. Notice that the um, that the smaller resistor gets less voltage. It's actually proportional to the resistance value. Um, so if a resistor is twice as uh, big, it's gonna get twice the voltage. And, then, and that'll come out of the math if you just follow the kind of steps that I'm talking about here. But it's good to notice that because that might save you some time or help with your understanding. So now for the third resistor, we're gonna multiply it by 56 and then we get 75, 0.6784, so 6.8, rounding to two decimal points. And we've got everything filled in. I do want to do show you one last thing. And this is a final check. If you look at all these voltage drops right here, and if you add them together, so I'm going to take 45.60 plus 27.7 or 29.73 plus 75.68, if I add those all together, what I'm gonna get is 150.01. And if you notice, that is the same as the voltage, my total voltage that I had over here. It's a little bit different because of rounding. Um, you know, it's not 150 even, it's 150.01. But as long as you're in that area, you know, within maybe a volt or so, um, then you can say, yep, this has got to be right because all of the voltage gets used up by all of the individual resistors. And so when I add up all those voltage drops, it should be equal to my voltage that I started with. 
Hopefully this will help you with today's assignment. And if you have any questions like usual, give me an email and um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, hopefully everything's going well because no one's I haven't heard much from any of you uh, so far. But this is starting to get a little bit more complicated. So don't work, don't be afraid to reach out and ask for some help. Uh, we can do a Google Hang or something like that. All right. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.